Well then, I think we've uncovered a new suspect. Are you kidding me? Why are we even spending time debating this? I mean, we haven't even addressed the elephant in the room. That's quite the accusation you've made. However, I cannot continue to let you speak this way. Staying silent is no longer an option if it means a false accusation is made. First, I assure you I was in the cafeteria at least ever since 11.15. Wishy-washy testimony is unacceptable in a dire situation such as this. Your doll bait theory is full of holes and is only supported by circumstantial evidence. I shall assert a far more logical conclusion. I concur that Santa was lured out of the science lab. However, he was lured not to the ground, but the roof. The doll is the murder weapon. An impact was used not to kill, but to topple him over the edge. This not only contextualizes the doll in relation to the murder, but gives a far more logical explanation for the origin of the doll's damage. More than the flimsy argument you've provided. The culprit then moved Santa to the science lab, whether it be by foot or by flight. The hallway connecting the outside and the science lab was never monitored, as is conclusive from our collective testimonies. This now expands the number of possible suspects to a far greater number. Everybody who was ever alone during the 45 minute gap of 11.15 and 12 o'clock. I cannot be one of these suspects, as I have no reliable way to wield and use the doll to attack the victim. I welcome you to battle my logic. I cannot be the culprit. I'm having trouble believing it myself. By use of sound in the open window, Santa Claus was lured to the building's roof. Santa wouldn't be lured by something so stupid. The culprit used the doll to hit Santa, causing him to fall off the roof. What an idiot, jeez. After this, it is a simple matter of bringing Santa to the science lab, locking the room up, and fleeing the crime scene via the window. I guess that explanation does account for everything. I cannot be the culprit. I'm having trouble believing it myself. By use of sound in the open window, Santa Claus was moved to the building's roof. No, that's wrong! It looks like luck was on our side today. Throughout the day, completely unbeknownst to them, we had a sentry standing guard. Waterhorse, you were standing next to the only door to the roof all day, correct? I prefer horse of water, but yes. And you also didn't see anybody there all day, correct? Yes. Oh, duh, I see what you're doing. Exactly. Santa couldn't be brought to the roof of the building, at least not by foot, because anybody passing by would be spotted by water horse. That testimony is inadmissible. Water horse is a suspect. Your face is inadmissible. Him standing by the roof was simply a fib, you told to give an explanation regarding where he was all day. I don't even really like telling lies. How dare you? If it was a fifth, it's an incredibly risky one. If anybody just so happened to pass by the roof, his lie would be immediately exposed. If he really wanted to explain away his absence, any of the other nondescript classrooms would have been a far better cover. Okay, uh, what exactly does this mean in the whole grand scheme of things? Celestia said a lot of stuff. It means Santa couldn't have traveled to the roof by foot, and subsequently nobody, was well, not without flying, could have traveled to the roof at all. Formidable, a effort. Does that disprove the whole Santa fair thing, though? Falling in the roof in that matter, yes. I do like the theory, however. His falling from a great height would match up with his head wounds. 
They would also create a humorous parallel with this though, if it also fell in character 10. Wait, you brought that thing with you? I do, and something yet undiscovered about it bothers me. It makes an interesting rattling sound when you shake it like... Oh. Oh? Google is friends and friendly. I found the key to the side slot. It was hidden within the cracked head of this doll. And you can't plug on it. It appears the final key to this case has been discovered. With this new information, we have the ability to bring light to the true culprit. Why would the key be hidden in such a fashion? To make sure we don't find it? Precisely. And why would the culprit not want this key to be found? Because it would reveal who they were. What an interesting turn of events. Correct again. Finally, how would this key reveal who the killer was? I will answer this one for you. An aspiring toy maker is the creator of this doll, and they developed all its hidden intricacies, including a hidden compartment. What? Of course you may surmise, this toy maker is crass. This is complete red hot bullhorn! I didn't put any hidden compartments in there! They're hollow by design! Of course you would not dare reveal how to expose such a compartment under scrutiny of death. But of course, there is no other explanation for why the key is inside this doll. Yes, but why would he put it in there in the first place? May I bring your attention to the blood on the key? How do you believe the blood got on the key? I will answer this question with a question. How do Pegasi hold objects? Under their wing. And under Crash's wing is a wound. Crash is therefore the possessor of this key, and therefore the culprit. I can't believe this! I don't believe this! But wait, that could just as easily be Santa's blood. Might I remind you that only just during this trial do we discover that blood testing was not an option. Poor feeble little Crass, he was acting without knowing if his blood could be distinguished from Santa's. Trying so hard to cover up for his crime, and yet here it is in full display. That's not true! None of this is true! This doll is indispensable towards locating the culprit. This doll's cracked head formed conveniently upon impact with Santa's own head. Without it, we wouldn't have found the key stashed inside it. And the key proves Crass is the killer? Precisely. Crass is the owner of this doll. He used a secret compartment in the doll to stash away the key. As the creator of this doll's mechanisms, and the only one who knows how it functions, Crass is the only one who can insert any items into it. Lies! All lies! This doll is indispensable towards locating the culprit. This doll's cracked head form conveniently upon impact with Sandy's own head. Without it, we wouldn't have found the key stashed inside it. And the key proves Crass is the killer? Precisely. Crass is the owner of this doll. He used a secret compartment in the doll to stash away the key. As the creator of this doll's mechanisms, and the only one who knows how it functions, Crass is the only one who can use it. No, that's wrong! You sound very confident in your words, but under those words is a very flimsy argument. How dare you! I kind of don't want to make her angry. Can we not make her angry? Celestia, according to your very own argument, the key was inserted into the doll by the only one who was able to open the toy, Crass. But simply retelling the correct order of events completely disproves that theory. This doll's head was cracked first. With a cracked head like that, literally anybody can insert the key into that doll after setting up that scene. Ah, it appears we're finally getting somewhere. Well, we better be. This is getting really confusing. 
I agree. In fact, while the atmosphere is set like this, I think it's time to clear up a few misconceptions. Misconceptions? You mean you can prove me innocent? Now, now, Crass, I didn't say that much. As productive as it might be that Celestia has given us new possibilities towards who the murderer is, I think a lot of what she has stated is rather flawed in logic. I shall be the judge of that! Are you getting flustered? You shouldn't be if you truly are innocent. First, let's clear up the method of murder. How exactly was Santa killed? He was hit by the doll, right? But a fatal hit to that doll would cause far more damage to the doll than we currently see. I thought he fell off the roof. We disproved him falling off the roof already. <sighs> well, Reverie, you seem to be good at figuring this kind of thing out. How did Santa die? This shouldn't be too hard. It's basically process of elimination. I got it! Well, if the doll can't be the murder weapon by itself and no other murder weapon of the type was found anywhere else, then his death must have been caused by falling from a great height. Precisely. Next, how could he have fallen from a great height? I got it! Well, the second floor would hurt, but it wouldn't cause death. And we know the roof is off limits, thanks to Water Horse from earlier. Your gratitude does not fall on deaf ears. So, if he must have gotten killed by falling a great height, he must have been... pulled up? Correct again. The only ones who have the ability to ascend to a height like that without roof access are winged. Likewise, I think we can all agree that the only one who could kill Santa at this point are those who are alone and have wings. I was not alone. I was in the cafeteria. Shut up, Celestia. This brings our suspects down to two, Celestia and Crass. Oh, I can't catch a break here! Now that we have that cleared up, let's clear up the circumstances surrounding the key and the doll. First, why is the doll damaged? I got it! I'm still standing with my original assertion. It was used to bait Santa. It most certainly isn't irrelevant considering its placement in the science lab and involvement with the key. But it sure wasn't used to hit Santa because there would be no point. Once he's lifted up in the air, he sure ain't gonna need to get hit by the doll. He's basically already dead. I don't know about that. If you were being flown in the air, I would think it'd be pretty easy to wiggle out. Unless you were unconscious from the swing from that doll. Not entirely. If Santa were fixated on that doll, the winged horse could easily sneak up on him. In flight, we don't make that much noise. And once he's been grabbed from the back, there's nothing he could do about it. So it has come down to this. You believe that is how I murdered Santa Claus? Oh, Celestia. If it weren't for this, I wouldn't be suspecting you right now. Of all the reasons you came up with to get you off the hook, I'm curious as to why you not being able to lift Santa through the window was not one of them. Perhaps because you could lift Santa. You are rather... durable. She's made for children after all. Therefore, I don't see it as an impossibility that this murder method is a viable option. Next, let's talk about the key and why it was placed in the doll. That was so the killer could hide the key, right? No, that's not the only possible explanation. That doll is not designed for storage! But nonetheless, it was used for storage. Riddle me this, if you have no pockets, where is the best place to store a small key? Anywhere, really, if you don't want to lose the thing. Exactly. Now I call it a safe assumption to say that Santa was the last possessor of this key. At least before he was killed and the key transferred ownership to the murderer. Are you about to accuse Celestia because she has no pockets? That is an unreasonable accusation. No, because although Crass has his best thing, he has no pockets either. Anyway, if the killer wanted to store away this small key and had no other storage space, Sounds like it'd be rather convenient to use this doll now, wouldn't it? I mean, I guess. That is misuse of product! Now, there's finally one last thing I'd like to come back to. Why the door was locked in the first place. Why the door was locked? 
We never solved this, and it will provide us with a rather important clue. Let's ask the obvious question first. Why lock the door? To hide the body, obviously. Of course. Now this is where it gets interesting. Why hide the body? But that's also obvious, so that we don't find it. Yes, the door was locked to hide the body. The body was hidden so that we couldn't find it. But we did find the body. The body wasn't supposed to be found. Now think, what exactly does that mean? I got it! It means the crime scene was likely intended to have more work put into it. We discovered it by complete chance, meaning we probably saw things we weren't supposed to see. Correct again, and I believe that's exactly what happened. The doll at the crime scene was an anomaly. The blood outside was an anomaly. If the killer wanted to frame someone, they did a rather poor job. So, how does that make you feel, Princess Celestia? Foolish! How foolish and immature! You seem to have a baseless vendetta on me, as everything in your accusation also applies to Crass. She's got a point. Yeah, nothing here is actually specific towards Celestia herself. Are you kidding? Even after a super evil voice reveal thing, you still trust her? None of your evidence is conclusively exclusive. Who are you going to believe? A princess or a scruffy chimney sweep? Why you little- This is all completely absurd! How do we even get to this point? How is Santa even dead? Santa was a martyr! He would always talk about wishing for the good of all, even in his demise! He... He was... He... I respect him and all the sacrifices he has made! Santa was a very intelligent man, a caring man, a very humble man, and most of all, a very honorable man. There's a lot you can learn about a person from a hand-to-hand -hand fight. A respectful close court is due between two fighters of similar skill. Even when one falls, they bow in respect. Because in a respectful duel, it's never about winning. Santa was that kind of man. He is a friend and I look up to all he has done for all of us. I lost in that duel with him, and that drives me to become stronger. I will work, and one day I will make it up to him. Cute. But your false sentiments mean nothing now. You're grasping at straws if you think you can sway opinions with that performance. <laughs>